Hey everybody, welcome to some old guy playing. Um, hey, got a little bit of cold today. Uh, was playing a little bit of Resident Evil 2, and I decided that uh, it was uh, time to show you guys how to cheat at this game. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is why would I cheat? Well, lots of reasons. One, maybe you just don't feel like dealing with nonsense. But another reason is, is because the resources in this game are very, very limited. And I want to try to kind of take an opportunity to maybe, you know, make it so that the resources aren't quite so limited. So I'm going to show you real quick how to use Cheat Engine in order to get this um, to be not so, uh, you know, difficult. Okay, so, <coughs> pardon me, I have a cold. So let's start off by starting up Cheat Engine. Um, Cheat Engine's a free app you can download. <coughs> Pardon me. And let's go ahead and attach it to Resident Evil 2. Very nice. Okay. So now let's see. I have 14 bullets in the old Matilda here. So we're going to go ahead and put 14 into our initial, initial search. And we're going to scan through our, in, our, our memory looking for the number 14. All right. Now let me bring Resident Evil back up again. So, if I were to fire two bullets, then I would have 12 bullets left in my gun. So let's come on back over here. <coughs> Cheat engine and put it off. So now this shows all the memory that is decremented from 14 to 12. And there's been a quite a bit of it. So we're going to need to take another couple of shots. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the game. Okay, and then back to Cheat Engine. Fired two shots. Now 10 is the new number we're looking for. And now we have the memory address where the ammo in the gun is stored. Now I've already done the research for this, so you're just going to have to trust me on it. All you have to do is maybe say put this up to a more reasonable amount and then click active, which means actively make sure that in this memory address is always 15. So now if we go back into the game, and we look down here at the lower right hand corner where it says 15. It always says 15. Now what about your other weapons? Well, theoretically you could go through and you could do the same trick over and over again with all those weapons. Um, however, there's an easier way. Now, we come down here and we look at this address here. If we can figure out what writes the number into that address, we might be able to change the opcodes there and make it so that we no longer decrement. Now, I've already checked. This is a common function that's used to depre deprecate the weapon's ammo for all weapons. So if you change the code that alters this address, you'll change the code that writes to each and every one of the, the weapons decrementing their amount. So I've already done the research, you have to trust me on this. So let's go in here and figure out what writes to this address. Let's go ahead and attach the debugger. Okay, I'm gonna go back in. Okay. Let's bring that back up. I fired five bullets and you can see that the same code wrote to that address five times, and this is the instruction. So actually, let's go ahead and turn that off. All right, so let's look at what we got here. When we click on this and it shows that this is what we wrote, we end up with this little section of code right here. Now, this is what's known as assembly code. This is what actually gets run by your computer. So the, the one that's got these two little carrots, this is the one that actually does the writing, but this function here, jump je2.exe to this address, is what's being called in order to decrement the amount in your gun. So this whole thing is one common function. Now, if we actually look, we can actually see what's going on here. This assembly instruction is saying move into this address, whatever's in this address. So if we look and we say rax plus 20. Well, RAX is right here. So here's the address that is in RAX. 
and we can see that it's 1629B320. Okay, well, then plus 20 hex would make this B440 instead of B. So it'd be 20. I apologize about the cough. There is nothing I can do about it. So let's look. Over here at this address, 1629B340. So this is the address that holds the value 15. All right, so what's EBX? What are we moving into that address? Well, it looks like, okay, so EBX, this requires a little bit of a simile knowledge. EBX is RBX's lower order bits, this half of it. So it's saying, uh, move in an E. Well, an E is, um, if I remember correctly from hex, it's 14. So what it's saying is, is move 14 into this value. So what it's basically saying is, is right over this value with the 14. So decrement it by one. Now we can look at similar things here, like RSI. Move RSI. What's RSI? RSI is this address. I wonder, can I go directly to that address? I don't think I've ever done that before. So um, it's move RSI. <coughs> I bet you what this is, is this is the previous or the, the current amount that's going to have to be de decre decremented. And then RSP, RSP plus 30. So that would be, anyway, this all does stuff. So here's what you have to do is you can either come in and you can edit this code right here to just no op or you can rely on the assembler to do it. So that's what I'm going to do just to see if that works. <coughs> so sorry. So you come up here and you right click on this instruction. And you say, hey, replace with code that does nothing. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. It says a uh, name here, but it's not really that important. Now let's bring up the disassembler. We can see now, bring it in to view, and the disassembler, this area of code right here, which was 14, it's now all no opt. So no op, no op, no op. It's saying don't do anything. So when the instruction pointer points to a no op, it automatically just increments the memory address and then increments the memory address and then increments it again until it finds something that it can actually act on. So now that we've replaced that code with something that does nothing, let's go back into the game and see if that problem. Notice how it didn't change. Now, because that code is commonly used, I can pull out my Magnum and nothing changes. So let's go show how this alters the game. Pretty cool, huh? to get a Mr. X visit. There he is. Ooh, I suck at this. All right, so he's on his knee now. Nice. So, as you can see, super easy to cheat at RE2. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Hopefully, you guys learned something. Um, it requires a little bit of knowledge of code. Marvin, what are you doing over there, Marvin? Marvin, sit down, Marvin. Okay, so that's how you cheat at RE2. This has been some old guy playing, trying to uh, instruct you in the uh, evil ways of the hacker utilizing the cheat engine. So uh, do me a favor and get off my lawn.